This is a representative case of a cervical disc replacement for treatment of C5-6 disc herniation resulting in left-sided radiculopathy. This is an active 30-year-old young woman who presented to the hospital with excruciating neck and left arm pain accompanied by severe left arm numbness and weakness requiring surgical intervention to remove a very large herniated disc and to decompress her spinal cord and exiting nerve root. X-rays reveal loss of normal cervical alignment or lordosis, as well as kyphosis at the C5-6 disc space. MRI reveals a large C5-6 extruded disc herniation that is compressing the left hemicord and exiting left C6 nerve root. Here is a cross-sectional illustration as a magician would slice his assistant, showing the spine, spinal cord, and nerve roots. The left side represents the disc above that is not herniated and there's plenty of room for the nerves to come out on either side. A C5-6, the right side of foramen is open, however there's a very large extruded disc herniation on the left going into the neural foramen and crushing the exiting C6 nerve root. In the operating room, the patient is placed on her back and x-rays are taken to localize the minimally invasive incision. Once localized, the incision is carefully marked out prior to commencing. Special microsurgical instruments are utilized for the case. Surgical microscopy is utilized for excellent magnification and illumination. If we look under the microscope, the patient's head is to her right as her feet are to the left. I have already performed a skin incision and meandered down between the musculature to the front of the spine. A self-retaining retractor has been placed and we can visualize the front of the intervertebral disc. An incision is made in the front of the disc in order to create a window and to start to remove the ruptured disc back to the spinal canal so that the spinal cord and exiting nerve root can be appropriately decompressed during the surgery. Microsurgical instruments and grasping devices are utilized to remove the disc back to the spinal canal and the location of the extruded disc herniation for microsurgical discectomy. Pins are placed into the vertebral bodies and a Caspar distractor is applied so that we can better access the disc space and implant the disc replacement later in the case. Once back to the spinal canal, the large left-sided disc extrusion is carefully removed and then evacuated from the spine with another grasping instrument. Additional extruded fragments of the disc are removed from within the spinal canal itself where they are compressing the spinal cord and left-sided nerve root. Under microscopic magnification, a nerve hook is utilized to gently mobilize these additional disc fragments and to remove them from the spinal canal itself. Once this has been performed, the nerve hook is utilized under the surgical microscope to make sure that the spinal cord and exiting nerve root are completely free of further compression and that no further disc fragments are located. The disc space is then sized with dedicated sizing instruments. The device is then trialed and the appropriate size device is selected. The implant selected in this surgery is the Zimmer Biomet MoBC, which is made up of two cobalt chrome metal end plates and a polyethylene core. It allows motion in all six degrees of freedom, and there is 10 year data on this device with excellent results and long term experience. The device is inserted on a radiolucent dedicated inserter, and here I'm holding it prior to inserting into the patient. The device is gently tapped into position under x-ray guidance, and then the distractor pins are removed. Here we can see the device on a lateral x-ray and anterior postural x-ray within the disc space, and here is the device up close underneath the microscope. 
This is an illustration of how a patient moves with a two-level disc replacement, inflection and extension, as well as lateral bending from side to side. Here are our patient's six-week post-operative radiographs showing excellent extension and flexion in a short time after surgery. Thank you for listening today. I'm Jonathan Stieber, MD. I'm an orthopedic spine surgeon at NYU Medical Center, and I can be found at stiebermd.com.